Good morning, UACC family. I hope you're having a beautiful Monday morning today. Uh, you know, I started last week a three-week series on James chapter 3 about the tongue. Uh, last week we saw that control of the tongue is a demonstration of maturity in our lives and that we all have a certain amount of influence over people that are uh, younger, more vulnerable, weaker, smaller than us, and how it's a, it's a sign of maturity if we can control our tongue and use it in a way that is beneficial for them. Uh, today I want to talk about how James sees the power of the tongue relative to its size. It's very interesting. He points to the fact that while the tongue is small in contrast to the rest of the body, it's just a small little muscle in our mouths, and yet it has a great impact much more than its size would indicate. So I want to read James chapter 3 verses 3 through 6. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they're steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes a great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person and sets the whole course of his life on fire. It is itself set on fire by the fire of hell. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, that's really an incredible little passage there. And I want to try to unpack it for you in a way that's understandable. Um, first of all, what I want you to see that he's talking about how this very small thing guides things that are much bigger than itself. How the, 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 the bit will guide the horse and the rudder will guide a big ship. But in that same way, these first two examples we can see that what he's talking about is something that is controlled by someone else. In other words, there is a rider on the horse, and he says the rider can control the horse with the bit. There's a pilot on the ship, and the pilot can control the ship by moving the rudder. These are positive examples saying that if we have control of those items, they have a great influence over the greater body. Notice the third illustration is a spark that ignites a fire. And all of a sudden, he's talking about these horrible, evil things. He's talking about terrible things. Why? Because there's no one in control in that case. There's no one who's able to control the spark that starts the fire. It's just a raging blaze that destroys and devours. So what James is saying is that when the tongue is controlled, it can exercise a positive influence over the horse or over the ship or over our lives. But when the tongue is unbridled, when there is no control, it's like a fire. It results in corruption of the whole person. The very source of it is the very fires of hell. In other words, when there's no control over the tongue, our fallen nature takes over. And everything that is evil inside of us comes out. See, we tend to think that these things don't matter too much. We're not too concerned about the little things we say here and there and, and the way we talk when we're among our friends or the way we talk when we're by ourselves. We say, so what? I'm gossiping a little bit. I'm criticizing a little bit. I'm maybe talking negatively about my friends or about my church or about some other thing. What difference does it make? I'm not, I'm not talking to a lot of people. I'm just talking to my spouse or I'm just talking to my best friend or I'm just talking to myself in the car. What difference does it make? You know, the scriptures tell us not only that we should not say such things, even in private, even to ourselves. Jesus says we shouldn't even be thinking such things. Do you understand that? We shouldn't even be thinking that way. For our tongues to give our lives proper direction, we need to get them under control. No matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, no matter who we're talking to, we need to be the pilot that controls that tongue. And that means we turn over the steering wheel to Jesus. We need to let him have the helm in our lives. Otherwise, our tongues will be a world of evil. 
and all of those negative things will come flowing out, setting the whole course of our lives on fire. Words are important because of the impact they have on others, but also because they reveal what is in us and who is at the helm of our ship. Your words are a window through which others can see into your heart. But even more than that, it's a window through which you can look into your own heart. And that's what God wants us to do. You know, because sometimes your words are just you talking to yourself. You're the only one that knows them. You're the only one that sees what's coming out. You're the only one that knows what's going on in your head. So it's a time to look into that window, to look into what we're saying, to look into what we're thinking and ask ourselves, am I using my tongue in a way that honors God and glorifies Him? To understand any ways that my ship is out of control or my horse is running wild and to surrender control to Jesus. Take a look in that window today. Spend this day considering the things that are coming out of your mouth, considering your words, and let him turn you away from the fires of destruction to a path that honors him and glorifies our Father in heaven. Have a great day, and let God bless you today in this very special way. Amen.